Hi everyone, welcome back to my lab and today's video, which is going to be my first impression of the brand new Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. Plus, I ordered a couple of new lipsticks from her newest launch. I purchased two lipsticks and two lip liners, but I figured that this would be a great time to update my lip swatch videos because now I have 17 Lisa Eldridge lipsticks in my collection. That probably should give you an indication of how I feel about them, but I figured that this video can serve as a good reference for anyone looking to purchase any of their shades. She sent out free blister sheets of the foundation with any purchase on her website from the most recent launch, and I picked up the light medium set one. I'm going to take you through my first impression application and a little bit of a wear test and let you know my thoughts. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jodi. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you're going to enjoy it, and if you do, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up while you're watching and consider subscribing and joining our growing makeup family. Now without any further delay, let's go ahead and try out the foundation. I've got my little trial pack of the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. I thought it was so clever of her to include samples with, you know, anybody's lipstick order this time around before launch. I picked up Light Medium Set 1. It's got number 9, 10, 11, and 12. So hopefully one of those will work for me. When I'm trying out our new foundation, I like to use the Good Molecules Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer because I find that it's hydrating without adding any extra glow or stick to my face and so I'm able to prime but also really see what the foundation on its own can do. I'm going to go ahead and apply this all over my skin. So this is what the little set looks like and it looks like the ones on the left have more of a neutral undertone and then the ones on the right are a little bit more peachy. So in order they are 9, 10, 11, and 12. I'm going to go ahead and try the lighter of the shades here. I'm going to go with shade number 9. This one looks like it's going to be a little bit light, doesn't it? Looks a little light, but I am going to go ahead and use this one. I think I can make it work. And I'm going to use a refer number 31 brush. This is a new brush from their collection. So this is a self-setting foundation. So I think I have to work relatively quickly. It's described as a buildable medium coverage foundation and she does recommend that you start out you know with light layers and build up to your desired opacity. So upon application of that first layer I definitely see the self-setting claim it's like completely dry on my skin. However even though I went in with quite a few dots on my face I feel like I don't have that much coverage. So this is just one layer applied. I think I'm going to apply a little bit more in the areas where I most need it just to see if I can increase the coverage a little bit. I do find that it's a little bit lighter than I would normally like. So I usually like to add a little bit more in the cheeks where I have discoloration, a little bit on my chin. See, like even as I'm tapping it, it's automatically drying. I do kind of want to get a feel for it with a sponge as well. So I'm going to go ahead and dab with a beauty blender. And it blends equally easily with a brush as well as with a sponge. And I'm not seeing any significant difference in the finish, to be honest. I didn't have any streaks with the brush. I obviously don't have any streaks with the sponge. Again, it's completely dry to the touch. So if you're a person that enjoys not setting your foundation, I think that this one would be great for you. I want to apply a little bit of concealer before I do the before and after. And so I'm going to use this one by Nude Sticks that I've been really enjoying. And I can see already upon application of the concealer that the foundation is a little bit lighter than I normally would like, which is fine. I mean, I have three other shades to play with. So you've seen the application and how the foundation applied, both with a sponge as well as with a brush. I really saw no difference in the application, and personally I prefer to work with a brush. I find it a little faster for me. And so far it looks like the soft focus is coming from the self-setting feature, and it does look like I have a soft focus, but that's also, I believe, making my skin look a little bit dry. Definitely more dry than I'm used to with the foundations that I have a tendency to lean towards. So I'm going to go ahead and finish Finish off my face and I'll come back and share the final look as well as my lip swatches that I picked up from her latest collection. 
Okay, so my makeup is all finished. I'll share my thoughts on the foundation at the end of the video, but I did want to get into the lipstick swatches that I wanted to share with you today. I did pick up two lipsticks from her new collection. She released four new shades. The ones I elected to choose were Velvet Cinnabar and Velvet Intrigue. And the reason for that is that the other two shades were a little bit more on the pink side. One of them was even, I believe, based on Velvet Blush and she made like a lighter, more muted version of it. I think it was called Blush Lightly. So I feel like I have Velvet Blush and I enjoy that one as it is. So I decided to just pick up two of the shades, but I probably will eventually buy them all. As you will see, I have a very large Lisa Eldridge lip collection. So I figured I'll just go ahead and film this swatch video so that it can be useful to you in case you are interested in picking up any of those shades. I'm gonna swatch them lightest to darkest, starting with the luxuriously lucent ones, just because those are a little bit easier to wipe off. This is the shade Go Lightly, which is so elusive. It sold out when she released it about two summers ago, and it hasn't been back since. It's a highly desirable shade. A lot of people are interested in this one, but for me personally, it's not fully opaque and it's a very light shade. It doesn't fully coat my lips, and so it's not one of the most flattering on my skin tone personally. So here you have Go Lightly. Next we have the shade Atomic Cherry. This is one of my favorites. I feel like it gives you that pretty popsicle lip look and it's, it's super hydrating on the lips. I really enjoy this one. Next we have the shade Love of My Life, a beautiful cool tone magenta pink color. Really beautiful for summer. This one I believe was released along with Go Lightly in that one summer when she first launched this formula. This one is called Painterly, and even though it looks very dark in the bullet, you can see that it's kind of a, a rich burgundy kind of shade. Really, really appropriate for this fall weather. And those are all the luxuriously lucent lip shades that I have from Lisa Aldridge. So now we're moving into her Velvet Lipsticks. This one is Velvet Intrigue and one of the ones I picked up from the new collection. It's a lighter shade, but I'm really glad that I can get full opacity even over my really pigmented lips. I do feel it'll look better with the addition of a lip liner, but I'm, I'm really excited to see that it's not too light for me. Here you have Velvet Fawn, and it is a lighter shade as well. This one pulls a little bit more brown, whereas the previous one was just a little bit more pink. Next we have Velvet Affair, and of the lighter shades, this is my personal favorite because it's like a peachy brown color, and I think it really flatters my skin tone. So this one is Velvet Affair. Next we have Velvet Muse, and I think that this is my lips but better shade, I would say. It's just a tiny bit darker than my natural lip color, and so it's a really wearable shade for me. This one is for the lighter pinks, like a fair is for the lighter nudes, in my opinion. Here we have another beautiful pink. This is Velvet Beauty. We're getting into some punchy pinks now. This one is Rainbow Spill, and this one launched along with that summer collection, the Go Lightly shade. This one is probably the most bold color in the entire collection, in my opinion. This is Velvet Carnival. Here we have Skyscraper Rose, and we're quite a few lipsticks in, so my lip line is starting to be a little suspect, but you understand taking lip colors on and off can be a little rough, but I think you get a good idea of the color. So this again is Skyscraper Rose. This might very well be my favorite shade in the entire collection. This one is Velvet Dragon, and it's also one of the ones for which I purchased the lip liner in this release. This is a brighter red-orange shade. It came out with her initial launch. This one is called Velvet Morning.
Here we have a true blue base red. This is Velvet Ribbon, also came out in her initial launch. We're getting into the deeper shades now. This is Velvet Blush. This is the shade for which she released a lighter version during this most recent release. Next up, Velvet Myth. Velvet Jazz. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of jazzed that I've got two more from my existing collection plus the one that I purchased. This is Velvet Decade and in my opinion, a very cool tone, dark brown. Now we have the vampiest of all the shades. This one is Velvet Midnight. It's almost a very rich, rich, deep purple shade. Obviously, you don't have to go this heavy with your swatch or your lip application, but my lips said I had to. There. They're definitely feeling the effects of all the swatching. But this is Velvet Midnight. Last but not least, I'm ending with the shade Cinnabar, the second brand new shade that I purchased from this launch. And I think we might have a new favorite. I did apply it with the lip liner because of course after all the swatching, my lips were looking a little rough and it definitely did the trick. My makeup looks absolutely freshly applied. Really beautiful shade. I'm very, very happy with it. I've been wearing the foundation now for close to three hours and this is how it has settled on my skin. I intentionally applied mostly powder products over it. I did use a cream contour but other than that I'm wearing a powder blush, powder highlight and I did use the Patrick Ta palette again so I did go over it with a cream like I used it before um, but it was powdered down first and this is what the foundation is looking like. I want to make sure that you can get a really close look. In terms of setting spray, I also didn't add anything that would increase the glow. I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury one, which doesn't increase any glow. It just increases longevity only and sets all the powders down. So again, I wanted you to see the actual finish of the foundation. And I have to agree, it is a really, really natural finish foundation. My skin looks like skin. You can still see, you know, the texture of actual skin. It did self-set, so if you're one that doesn't enjoy setting your foundation, this one really sets itself. Like, it was completely dry immediately after application, and I think that's part of the reason why the powders went over it so beautifully and so smoothly. A lot of places where I frequently have trouble are in my smile lines. Foundation tends to creep there. Also, like, the more mattified foundation the more um, full coverage foundations they tend to settle there more and more and you can see the lines because my skin is a little bit dry but i don't see necessarily foundation settling in there same up here where i you know kind of crinkle my eyes nothing is really setting in my lines it's a very natural skin like finish all right, now that you've seen it up close, let's go ahead and chat about the foundation. All right, it is now many hours and many lipstick applications later, and I just wanted to share my opinions about the foundation. I like the foundation. I think it's really nice. I think that with the claims, let's see, it says that it's self-setting. I absolutely agree. I tried on powders over it, and they blended literally like they were going over powder or just dry skin. If you like working with powder products like bronzers, blushes, highlights, they will lay beautifully over this foundation. So it says that it effortlessly smooths and unifies skin with a natural looking soft focus finish. I also agree with this. I do feel that my skin is somewhat blurred, but because of that blurred soft focus look, it also looks a little bit more dry than I typically go for in a foundation. If you're not new here, you know I'm 42 years old and I have really dry skin, so I prefer my foundations to be on the dewy, luminous side and very, very hydrating. Now I went 
in with a hydrating primer, but nothing too dewy or luminous because I wanted to see the foundation for what it was. I will, of course, try it out again with a more luminous primer and see what the result will be then, along with her Seamless Skin Liquid Luminizer product to see how it looks combined. So it says you can achieve customizable medium coverage that fuses seamlessly with your skin. I do agree that it does light to medium coverage. I only built it up in my cheek area and the trouble spots that I have where I have a little bit of discoloration. I wouldn't call it a medium coverage foundation. I think it was light to light medium coverage, not all the way to a full medium. So depending on how much you actually want to cover, this may or may not be the foundation for you. I tend to not have problematic skin and I don't like heavy layers of foundation, so this level of coverage is actually perfect for me. But in terms of the overall look, I don't feel it looks that much different than when I don't wear foundation. I mean, it's that natural looking on my skin, at least with the level of application that I use today. And it sounds like a negative, but it really isn't. It really speaks to the foundation being skin-like. I didn't notice any settling into my marionette lines or into my forehead threes or anything like that. I give you a really good close-up look so that you could see what my skin truly looks like before and after. And I think it's nice. I don't think that it is aligned with my foundation preferences. I really prefer a foundation that gives me beaming glow. And so I'm going to try it again, one of the other little blisters that I have, to try a slightly darker shade, which I think might be beneficial for me, but also trying it with a really luminous primer and her liquid luminizer product as well to see how they pair together. I'll definitely come back and share my opinions in a later video, but I thought it might be beneficial to share my first impressions from the viewpoint of someone who is 42 years old, has very dry skin, and prefers light to medium, very, very dewy finish foundations. I think it was a great idea of Lisa Eldridge to send out these sample cards for shade matching in particular, but also just so that you can see if it's the type of foundation that you will enjoy. I like it at this point. I do like it. I'm not in love with it just because I'm missing that dewy aspect, but I can definitely see someone who really loves to work with powder complexion products you are going to love this foundation. I really think so. As far as the lipstick application, I hope that you found it helpful seeing all the lip colors swatched on my skin tone. Now, Lisa Eldridge does an amazing job of showcasing her lip products on her website on people of all different skin tones. So definitely check out the website and kind of cross-reference to see which shades are going to be more suitable for you. I'm absolutely in love with Velvet Cinnabar. My goodness, I love this color. Oh, I decided to wear it even though it wasn't the most suitable like with the clothes that I'm wearing. I don't care. I love this shade so much. Might be a new favorite. It's definitely up there with Velvet Morning and Velvet Dragon. I absolutely love those shades so, so much. But I tend to love colors that pull orange because it flatters my warmer skin tone. It's not the first time I try out the lip pencils. I did pick up Cinnabar to match the lipstick, which I am wearing. I also picked up the shade Dragon because I just think it's such a unique shade and if you want to see a swatch here is a swatch of the lip liner these are so creamy I personally love that they're sharpenable because I don't use my lip liners all the time and I find that you know I sharpen it each time I need and I have fresh product the ones that are twist up they tend to dry out on me and also you don't really keep that sharp point so I love that she made them in the more traditional format they are pricey at $27 which is why I hesitated to order more but I really like them. Now that I've taken the time to swatch all the lipsticks and I'll use that as a reference for myself, I will be able to better choose liners that I think will be suitable for the shades that I feel I need it with. In particular, Velvet Intrigue and Velvet Fawn, since those were the lighter shades, but thrilled with my purchase. That's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you found it helpful. I can't wait to read all your comments and to know which shades you've picked out, which ones are your favorite, or if there's any that have called to your attention now that you've seen them applied. If you also tried the Lisa Eldridge foundation, it would be really fun if you could share your experience with it along with your skin type so we can kind of swap notes and see who the foundation is ideal for. Thanks again for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing really, really well and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon on my next one. Bye-bye.